Hey guys, how's everybody doing? It's your girl. Um, Nothing's Impossible 77. Today's Saturday, um, April 14th. And I just popped a video on real quick to converse with you guys a little bit. You know, yesterday I watched a movie for the first time. And please don't gasp when I tell you that this movie came out in 2008 and I'm just seeing it now. And I really don't care if you're religious. It's not a religious. This is not a religious video. I don't care what your beliefs are. Anybody that has ever seen this movie and didn't get affected by it would surprise me. I saw the Passion of Christ for the first time yesterday, and the fact that I weeped and wailed and hollered and bawled and blew my snots and a whole bunch of tissue is besides the point. The movie really affected me, but. You know what I got from that movie more than anything else is that everything in this life is a reoccurring cycle because I realize that even in modern times today, there are still people in your lives and mine that are at the drop of a dime that would, excuse me, that would at the drop of a dime yell, crucify you, crucify me, regardless of all the things that you've done for them. They go with the crowd. They go with the flow. If everybody's feeling you, they're with you. If everyone's against you, they're against you. And it really doesn't matter how many things they've seen do, you do in your life, how many times you've helped them, how many times they've seen you help others. They are crowd pleasers, and they will go with the flow. And you can shout till the cows come home. It's not going to change what people are. Isn't that amazing that everything is a reoccurring cycle, right? Everything is a reoccurring cycle. I mean, old music comes back and rappers make beats with it and old fashion, you know, old style, you know, comes back to modern day, old hairdos, whatever the case may be. Everything is a reoccurring cycle. So why wouldn't hypocrisy and backstabbing be a reoccurring cycle too? I find that a lot of the ancestors of those scribes and Pharisees that were in that movie are still alive right now and kicking. And truth is, some people, you know, may not want to betray you, but because they don't have any backbone, they will. So yeah, we've got a lot of modern day crucifiers today. It's just real talk. And, you know, even Judas, one of the 12 disciples that were real close to Christ in that movie. Uh, you know, how many of us know that it's the closest people to you that can sell you out? Because they know your moves. They know your, you, you know, they, they know your secrets. They're your confidants. They're there, you know, they're at the meetings when you're making your big plans. I mean, it's true. Now, this is not that, this doesn't mean that we should be paranoid and be worried about who's going to sell us out. Because if you live your life worrying about what other people are going to do, you will be so backwards and so messed up that you wouldn't even know what to do with yourself. And that's just the truth, okay? Modern day crucifiers is what I call them, y'all. How many of you have them in your life? I have them. Um, and, and you know what? It's okay, because they make up. They were part of the pie that makes our flavor so delicious, if you know what I mean. Because if you never had a hater, you wouldn't, you wouldn't strive more. If you never had someone to challenge you and maybe tell you that you can never do something, you might not have a fight even harder to do it. And it's not so much to prove to them that you could do it, but sometimes you need that push from people. It's nothing like somebody betraying you or stabbing you in your back. There's nothing like it if you really, really, really need that push. Oh boy, that'll give you the push you need, really. Modern day crucifiers, we all have them. People will crucify you because they're jealous of you. They'll crucify you because they don't understand you. They'll crucify you because they can't control you. They'll crucify you because they fear you. They'll crucify you because you're not like them. Wow. Modern day crucifiers. Don't worry about them. Don't worry about them. You know, I told you guys before that I had made a video, um, a Trayvon Martin video, and I was getting a lot of backlash from it. That's my grandson. He just came in. I was getting a lot of backlash from it. And would you believe somebody actually sent me a death threat on YouTube and told me that they're coming to New York to get me and I'm going to die. They're going to finish me. 
I would hate to wake up and be that person. How infected does your mind have to be? How meaningless does your life have to be that you have nothing better to do than to get up on YouTube and make threats that you really can't keep? See, because I want to tell you, I live in New York. There's two airports here. We've got JFK and we've got LaGuardia. Now, it dawned on me that you might not be able to fly. Because the last time I checked, they don't fly trailers. And no shade to my folks that live in trailers, because they got folks that live in trailers that are not trailer park trash. They have nice homes that are really together. And forget it, if they got a double wide, oh my God. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the trailer park trash that made the death threat. Now, so since you can't fly, gather up all your canned goods. Your canned peas, your canned corn, your canned mixed vegetables, and your Campbell's soup. And come on. And I'm looking you dead in your eyeball. Come on. And I know the tone of a child on YouTube. I know the type of, you know, grammar. This is an adult. I can tell you this is an adult. It's not a child. It's not one of those little silly, childish, you know, those little ch children that get on YouTube. This is an adult. Come see me. If you're old enough, you may have heard of Gomer Powell. Remember Gomer Powell? Well, come to New York. And you will get a surprise, surprise, surprise. Come see me. Don't think because I'm so positive and I'm so focused <laughs> that you can come to New York. Now, I know you're not coming, but I want you to. I want you to. See, folks, this is what I'm telling you when I say get your mind together. How infected must your mind be? That you want to send a death threat to me because I have an opinion. It's really sad. It, it, if we really stop to think about the filth and the garbage that people are wallowing in and have housed their mind in, we will be glad that we're not them. Anyway, guys. Um, modern day crucifiers. Don't worry about them. You can feed them. You can clothe them. You can give them shelter. You can be their best friend. You can get them out of any bad situation. They will still yell, crucify her, crucify him. It is what it is. But we're going to stay focused. We're going to stay positive. We're going to stay rooted and grounded in what we've got to do. Let the haters do what they have to do. They got their job. Hey. Judas Iscariot emptied out his guts and never sp spent a dime of the sil the 30 pieces of silver. It's sad, but hey. In every house, there's a vessel of honor and there's a vessel of dishonor. Let those dishonorable vessels do what they have to do. Peace and love to you guys. Talk to you soon. Later.